How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be continuing my Sharks of Summer series. Sharks of Summer is a series I do around here where once a week, at least once, I take a look at a shark movie and today we're going to be taking a look at 47 meters down uncaged. This is from 2019 and is once again directed by Johannes Roberts. The movie stars Sophie Nel Nelsey, uh, Corin Fox, and Bella Two. Now, I saw this back when it came out in theaters originally. I obviously rewatched it to do this review, and this was one of those cases and happened a lot back in the day and still kind of happens now where you uh, go in you watch a horror movie and enjoy it, and then you go home and watch the critical reviews, and everyone's just tearing it to pieces. Yeah, no, this movie got trashed on release, but honestly, I don't think it's that bad at all. I actually think it's quite a fun, you know, sort of a cheesy shark movie. But I think that's the thing, and it also happened with Johannes Roberts' other sequel, Strangers Pray at Night, where the tone was just a little different. The tone, compared to the first movie, was m much more goofier and bigger and, you know, they're fun movies, but compared to the original, just don't match. The first 47 meters down was serious, it was also very low budget, and it was one of those movies that was trying to do a lot with the low budget it had, and it really appealed to, like, the art house crowd and stuff. I can see, though, having been constrained with a low budget for so long, having an opportunity to make a bigger studio film and having fun with it, I can see wanting to do this bigger, more over-the-top movie. And the thing is, I think both styles of filmmaking are, of course, valid, but the idea that it's a sequel people expect it to match better. I mean, when compared to the first one, you have the same director, they're both scuba diving movies, and they both have sharks in them. But outside of that, there's not a lot of connective tissue, and I feel that if this movie had been called something else, like Tombs of the Blind Sharks or something, then this would have had a better reception. Kind of a case of Halloween 3, if it was just called Season of the Witch and all that. Um, it is a cheesy shark movie, and in turn, the serious crowd isn't going to like it. But I've seen a ton of shark movies myself, and this is definitely in the upper third of them. Just go in expecting a fun, over-the-top shark adventure movie, and you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, that being said... The plot is relatively simple, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it. I won't do any significant spoilers, but I do want to lay out a few pieces in order to dig a little deeper. Again, no significant spoilers. Anyway, we open up with two stepsisters in Mexico. They're not from Mexico, but they got drugged down there by their dad, who is an archaeologist, and he's investigating an underwater Mayan tomb. The whole thing got sunk, so you have to dive down and explore it. Um, you have to dive down and explore it. Now, since he can't spend time with the girls, he does this thing where he buys them tickets to like a touristy shark boat. They don't want to go on it, and they decide to sneak off with their friends. One of their friends is dating a guy that works on the dad's crew, so she knows about a secret swimming spot where they can go and have fun and not be disturbed. However, the secret swimming spot connects to the back entrance of the tombs, and there's some scuba gear here left by the crew, and it would be really fun to explore the tombs, right? Well, they go in, they say they're not going to go too far, in, out, 20-minute adventure. We all know the drill, right? Well, they go in, and, of course, the shark shows up, and they accidentally knock down the structure and 
close themselves in there, and now they have to escape the shark, and right off the bat, both the shark and the tombs are pretty cool. Let's talk about the tombs first. The tombs, sunken underwater ruins. Statues twist and turns. It's like a maze. It gets really tight and claustrophobic at some points, and other points opens up into a big, cool set. This place is really cool. An underwater ruins. That That's just a great set, and right off the bat, getting to explore this, some cases with point-of-view shots, it's really, really cool. Also, the shark is pretty cool as well. Uh, he ha His family has been in these ruins for forever. The dad apparently finally opened up the wrong cave and let him out, and because of that, he's blind. So you can do things where, you know, if you stay still long enough, the shark might not notice you, so it's kind of like Quiet Place, you know, stay still, don't let the shark hear you. Uh, there's that. It's also super pale and has some scars on it. It looks almost like a ghost shark. It's pretty cool looking. Um, that being said, I do really wonder a few things. They say, you know, being in the cave for so long, it kind of got bred to be uh, blind. But I think that would take like hundreds of years, and this is Mayan conquistador time. I, I don't know if that would really be long enough, but whatever. But also the thing that bugged me, and even in theaters, is is what is this thing eating? Is there a whole ecosystem down there? I guess so. Apparently there's enough stuff growing in one of these caves to, to feed sharks for multiple generations, but maybe they do go out to sea and just live in the caves. I, I don't know. But anyway, you get that, and of course, as they go around, they'll find some of the the dad's team, and the dad's team can kind of be red shirts from time to time. It's cool to add in a few more people, and you never know who you're going to stumble across. But that being said, though, there is a bit of a lack of tension, because for most of the movie, it almost feels like you're at you know, some sort of animatronic ride where you're going through these things and watching other people get killed. For a large chunk of the movie, the girls feel safe, and you know that the red shirts are going to get eaten. I won't spoil whether it stays that way or not, but yeah, for large parts of this movie, it's just the guys that get eaten. And I really wish to amp up the tension and to make things not feel as safe, they wrote in a fifth girl and just had her get eaten brutally right at the beginning. That would have really helped. And, you know, you look at this movie, it is very close to an underwater version of The Descent. And The Descent was a very good classic movie. And it is a case of why did this not work as well and The Descent work better? And I think it is things, you know, like, uh, this is PG-13. You didn't establish the stakes as gruesome enough, you know? It, it, the descent is more gritty, you know? That being said, it works well enough, but the descent felt dangerous, and this kind of feels more like a haunted house. But that being said, underwater Aztec haunted house, that's still pretty fun, just not as scary as it could have been. Um, and I will say, it, it, the rest of the movie does play out pretty good. As I hinted at earlier, the plot is relatively simple. You do get the bit of uh, the two sisters not getting along. Oh, she's not my re real sister, and it, one of them's getting bullied. And I have to say, the actress that plays the nerdier girl does a good job of pulling it off, because you get who she's supposed to be, uh, despite the fact that... Uh, Hair and makeup and costuming apparently didn't, because she looks and dresses like a regular girl, and she doesn't look like super nerdy, like in a high school comedy or something. But she does a good job of pulling off those shyer mannerisms. And of course, she has to learn to be tougher, and the sisters have to learn to get along. But other than that, it really is a simple exploring the haunted location movie. And you do get, you know, explore hide, be quiet, go through the tight space, check your air, you know, see a cool new room. It is fun, but again, 
very, very simple on that plot. But that being said, it does lead to a pretty big over-the-top finale. Although that being said, there is an additional sequence at the end of the finale that did feel a little bit tacked on and kept the movie going a little bit longer than it should have, but it had some fun moments, right? Overall, though, 47 Meters Down is one of those that it didn't deserve the hate it got. I mean, the original, obviously a very different, much more serious movie. And again, this is a case that if it had a different title, if it wasn't pitched as a sequel, audiences might know what they're getting in for a little better. But going in, seeing it as more of a cheesy haunted house shark movie, and going in with those expectations, it is a pretty fun little movie. Again, not perfect, but it's one where I was thinking, okay, what shark movie should I cover this week? And I saw this one and I'm like, hey, that would be fun, right? And it was. Again, it's not perfect. It's not the best thing ever. But for what it is, I enjoyed it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Shark Movies playlist where we can find my review for Jaws and Sharknado and The Meg. I also talked about the first one of these, but that review is very old, so you have to put up with old Zach. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.